that you enjoy. I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Broken Down, written by Al Sporno. Of course, we can speak your language. A strange being said. Or rather, the speaker on the contraption strapped to the alien's chest said. The alien's actual vocalizations were a mishmash of that sounded something like a rhinoceros fart. Jack stifled an involuntary laugh and tried to look serious. Theoretically, the mining service was trained for the first contact situation, as evidence that alien life did exist had become pretty widespread in recent decades. In practice, nobody remembered that class. Jack himself had slept through most of it, though he was pleased that he would go down in history as the first to actually meet an alien face to face. Well, it's just odd, given that we just met you all, Jack said, taking a drag from his cigarette. The alien coughing a little. Didn't know there were aliens out here in the belt, you know. Now, you'll pop out of nowhere. Me rescue, speaking English, hell, that device of yours even has a bit of a southern drawl. Why didn't you all come down here and see us before all of this? There is a general prohibition on your home system. Nobody goes there if they can help it. Our FDL drive broke down near what you call the Proxima Centauri. This was as far as we could limp without the right parts. No one else is in range. Jack scratched the stubble and thought. Philosophy wasn't the asteroid winder's strong suit. He and his crew had been hired to extract valuable minerals from the belt, not muse on the subtle details of the first contact situation. But an old memory from his childhood surfaced, and he grinned. Oh, I get it. The Prime Directive. Like in Star Trek, you all don't want to make contact with the primitive worlds and such. Don't want to mess around with their affairs. And since we don't have this FTL of yours... The alien sighed. Or at least, it sounded like a sign to Jack. No, that's not it. I'm afraid I'm not much of a diplomat, so I'd rather not get into it. But we make contact with plenty of civilizations that are rather primitive. Much more so than you. Anyway, about the drive repairs. Jack nodded vigorously. Yeah, sure. We can help out if we've got the stuff you need. Don't leave nobody stranded in the belt. That's our line. I mean... Yes, nobody thought of no aliens when they wrote that. But me, I ain't leaving your old to die slow at ya. My mama didn't raise me to let folks die in space if I could help it. What do y'all need? Relief seemed to come over the alien, and it tapped its finger claw on the metal table. The translation device piped up again. Thank you, um, we can pay, you know. I got a list of some of the things that we need to get back up and running. Things of your technological means that we can adapt to fix our systems. Limp us home. We've got some trade goods that we'd exchange for them. The alien slid a plastic sheet with figures printed on it in clear, concise English. The miner looked at them over and nodded his head. It wasn't even anything particularly major. The aliens must have been pretty hard up to need them. Sure, sure, um, not a problem. We got spares of these. If you say you can make them work with your tech, then that's fine by us, sir. What do you got to trade? Holograms appeared in the air above the table, and that already wowed Jack. Holographic technology could only work within a specially designed airbox on Earth. They didn't even work well in low gravity. Jack wasn't fully versed in the tech, but it was something to do with the reflective particles circulating in the box. This alien could summon a hologram in just thin air. I like it already, mister. If you are a mister. Jack contemplated for a moment. There was no guarantee the aliens even had genders. I am the male of my species, yes. Our reproductive functions are, uh, similar to yours, um, in most essential respects anyway, um, I'm told that this is a case of convergent evolution. Jack winced a bit at that. The aliens were ugly as hell looking like some toddler's bad parody of one of those greys that featured in ancient 2D films. The thought of them bumping uglies forced a bile up at his throat. Fortunately, the alien didn't notice, or, if he did, was at least not offended. 
Perhaps humans were as ugly to him as the aliens were to Jack. The creature continued. We'll give you one of our holographic projectors and specs on how to build one for yourselves. It's within the reach of your technological level, though barely. I can also provide you with a sensory device. Sensory device? Jack wondered. Oh yes, the alien smiled, producing a small device from his pocket. I have keyed this one to respond to your brainwaves. In essence, what it does is it fools your nervous system into feeding sensations that are not actually there. You can use it in conjunction with our hollow projectors to bring holographic experiences to life. We use it for things like deep space training and education. Nah, Jack said, contemplating the device. I'm betting you use it for porn. We do not use it for reproductive simulation. Oh, I suppose if your people wanted to, it would work well enough for that. Something in the translation machine's voice conveyed a kind of disgusted shock. The alien's expression changed. Well, maybe he's lying, or maybe all of these aliens are prudes. They're lost. Well then, we all ain't that much smart after all. Cause man, that's a gold mine. But how about this empty out of yours, uh, Could we get the plans to that? Oh, no, uh, I would be in prison for life if I gave that away. Absolutely not, the alien said. The translation device's tone serious and firm. The miner contemplated that for a few moments and shrugged. The hollow projector and sensory device were already going to make him rich beyond his wildest dreams if he played his cards right. Okay, but I guess I can live with that. Jack typed a few things into the computer and called up the ship's engineer on the intercom. Yeah, Dave, um, I got a list of some parts that they want. No, no, uh, d don't worry about it. I'm telling you, we're gonna see good money out of this. Besides, it's downright neighborly, right? Uh, don't want to start no interstellar war, nor something like that. Um, send the parts up to the cargo bay for a wire transfer. We appreciate it, the alien said. The translation speech sounding relieved, sliding over the devices to the miner. It huffed in a manner that reminded Jack of a laugh. Let's just say that when we had a general drive failure in the sector of all places and found out someone forgot to load the spares, we were all panicking. Jack looked confused. Panicking? Why? You said you knew the system was inhabited. The alien's expression changed. Well, uh, I, um, I mean, uh, I don't mean any offense, um, uh, I didn't mean, um, Realization hit Jack suddenly, and he laughed uproariously. Oh, I get it now. This is like the rough neighborhood for you, ain't it? That's why you all don't come here unless you can't help it. You all got a flat in the galactic trailer park and figured us country bumpkins were gonna jack your ride or something. Don't go to Earth, them people are crazy. Pull off on your ships and do a drive-by or something. The alien seemed worried and said nothing, sitting back in his chair, his eyes darting around. Give us your ship. If you all don't have any porn and you're that scared, I bet you didn't bring any guns neither, did you? We can take that drive of yours. The alien stood frozen. Ah, <laughs> just kidding. Jack said between laughs. <laughs> Seriously, a joke, I'm just messing with you. We ain't gonna take a ship. Them parts you need are already on the way. And you did us a solid with these devices. We're gonna be rich, I think. When they figure out how to make porn with this. You all take care of yourselves now, yeah? Then the alien got up, his legs shaky with an expression that seemed to combine fear and disgust in equal measure. I am sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, um, and you've been very kind to us. Ah, oh, hell, I ain't offended. Yes, if I ran into me and needed to fix a flat, I'd be pretty scared of me too. But maybe you all should stop by sometime, not to be so judgy. We're not all that bad, Jack offered his hand. After a moment, the alien shook it gently in the human fashion. I guess not, uh, but they tell me that your planet has a greater nuclear missile to sentient individual ratio than the entire rest of the galaxy combined, and you actually use the things. Jack rubbed his chin and replied, his tone casual. Eh, not since the last decade after the dust up with the rebellion on Mars. Hell. That wasn't even a big one. Uh, tactical nuke, they said. Barely blew up a small army. Most of the folks were jerks, too. Totally deserved it. 
But I guess I can see why you don't want to give us that drive of yours. Don't want to let our space trash loose in the universe. The alien looked horrified and changed the subject. We'll be on our way. Um, thank you so much for your hospitality. He skittered about as fast as his stubby little legs could carry him, leaving Jack to ponder the situation. The aliens didn't give him a drive, but they did inform humanity of its existence, and he had a list of some parts that they seemed to need for the work. Maybe the eggheads in the fleet would know what to do with that. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you 